If you're new to Corel Draw or just need some great ideas, start here at New from Template. There are so many great professional designs, you'll have no problem finding something that's close to what you need to get you going. To increase the display of the little images there, just slide this slider to have a closer look. Bear in mind, you can choose options down the side here, which are basically categories. Choose a category and the images or the designs for that category will display. Well, what I'm going to do is choose all and I'm going to type in the word sport because we want to do a sport style design. Now, the system will search for everything relative to sport. And in our case, I'm going to choose this one. As soon as our template opens, we're ready to go. We can select any object on this template and begin to change it in any fashion. Select, click again, rotate, etc. As you select an object or a tool, the hint stocker will update with ways to use that tool. If, for example, I come over here onto the toolbar, any tool that I hover over, I will see a brief description of what that tool does and any keyboard shortcut it has. When you select a tool, again the hint stocker will update and the property bar will display properties that we'll learn to use about those tools. Well, for right now, Control Z on my keyboard will undo everything I've done and let's import a brand new background. So, up to Import and using my DVD, I've navigated all the way along this path to Undersea and I'm going to choose this image here. Simply double click when you see the right angle cursor, hit enter on your keyboard. And isn't that a great looking image to start with? Well, our image is now on top of everything else. So if I go over to the object manager, I can easily select my image, which highlights here, and then click and drag all the way to the bottom of the layer behind all of the other images within the stack. So let's delete what we don't want. Well, I don't want this image here. And before I delete the green block, I'm just going to turn the text white, click on the logo and make that white, and then select all of those objects. And as you can see, they're selected here. I can right click and choose group, or I can do it up here on the property bar as well. That means whenever I select, I will select all the objects as a group. I can also scale or resize them together as a group as well. Now I'll just bring that up a little bit higher and we'll come back to that later. Delete the green block and I'll delete down here as well. Finally we're going to take this text and pop it into two text frames we're about to create. So I'll choose Z on my keyboard selecting the zoom tool so that I can zoom in and we can look closer. Now I'll choose the text tool and first I want to edit this piece of text so simply click in my case, at the end of the text or anywhere within, and add the letters UK. Yes, you can edit text inside a group. I just want to scale this down, and then using the arrows on my keyboard, tap down a little, and that will move whatever selected object by the nudge distance we have set on the property bar. Again, selecting the text tool, I'm going to click and drag and create what we call a text frame. I'll select my pick tool and then right click and drag to the right to create a duplicate. Choose copy here. I'll select both of those and then stretch and just line it up with the edge there. Now they're both identical in size. If I then choose this text by selecting and right clicking, drag over my text frame and when you see the cursor with the arrow, release, choose, move into text. The first thing you'll notice is the text, of course, is too big for this text frame. So what we're going to do is make the text flow from this frame into that frame. So simply click with the text tool on that little node at the bottom there. When you see the change in the uh, pick tool, come over and hover over the other text frame. When you see the arrow, click. The two are now linked and you can see that with the grey arrow there. Well, what I want to do is full justify the text. So first of all, we'll click full justify, click in the other frame and click full justify. Now, of course, the text still doesn't fit. So what we're going to do 
is come up to text, down to paragraph text frame and choose fit text to frame. That automatically resizes the text to the right point size for those two frames. OK, F4, zoom to all objects. Now let's add a little bit more flair to our design. To do that, I think we'll add a few more underwater sea creatures. So again, up to import. This time I have navigated the same path, but I'm in Objects, Animal Kingdom, Water Animals. These images have a checkerboard background indicating they have a transparent background, so they're really great. I'll select this starfish, finger on control, and also select the uh, double fish there, and click Import. Wherever I click, the first image will appear, and then the second image. Now they look pretty good just adding them in there on their own. But let's do something a little more creative. Going to select my ellipse tool and click and drag, finger on control to create a perfect ellipse. Now the reason that's white in colour is before when I was actually playing I selected the white, a left click and a right click before I actually created the image. Now I'm going to make that black in colour and I'm going to right click on the X to remove the outline. Control C, copy to the clipboard, and Control V, paste back down. And you can see my second ellipse right there. Finger on Shift and scale up just a little. I'm going to remove the fill of that one and give it a white outline. I'm going to increase the size, the point size of the white outline to say 0.5. That's not too bad. I'll just increase the center ellipse just a little. There we go. Let's create a duplicate of that. Right click and drag. Copy here because I'll use that in just a moment. So I'm going to place this down the bottom like that and then select my fish. You can see my fish is below in the stacking order so click and drag right up to the top of the layer and that'll place it on top of our ellipses there. Just scale up a little. Make sure the fish fits real tight. Select all of that going to just pop it off the edge. Really creates a dynamic look when your image runs off the edge and we'll crop that in just a moment. Now working with this image here, let's uh, select the outline and we'll lower the thickness of that outside ellipse to say 0.25 and I'm going to shrink that down, bring it down here, maybe a little bit more. Grab my starfish, pop it over the top. Again it needs to come up to the top of the layer and I'll just shrink that down a little and select that and I'll just pop it over the top there and again the whole thing needs to come to the top this time I'm going to use shift on my keyboard and page up and that brought the whole uh, selection to the top layer now for our final touches we're going to do something different and I'm going to select the bezier tool come halfway along the image click once, right in the corner, click again, down the bottom, click, and back to the start, click but hold the mouse down this time and create a nice curve. Then I'm going to fill that with a blue, a nice soft blue, and right click to remove the outline. Now I want to make that transparent, so over to my effects tools, transparency, and on the property bar, I'm going to choose Uniform. By default, it's 50%. Now, if I go back to my Bezier tool, and again, I'll click right down the bottom in the corner, click once, back up to the top, click, and this time hold the mouse down and create a similar style curve, but not identical. And I'm going to go ahead and paste some that I've already created. You've seen how I did that to save time. So Control V, I'll paste down the ones I've already created. And additionally, I've added a couple of ellipses, as we did before. And I'm going to right click, just copy there to create an additional effect. Well, there's only one last thing to do now, and that is to select my crop tool and just right on the edge or just outside that bleed dotted line we can see there. Double click, crop my image to size and that's the end result. So what do you think? Why don't you have a go?